Hello everybody. So in 11.2 we're gonna do a second session today and I'm gonna split the session even in two parts because it's two different topics and the first one is on, on coding trees. Encoding here refers to encoding a ways of 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 uh, putting information into a sh shorter forum or in a particular forum. And so, for instance, you know, just a quick review of, of, of a way of coding. You have, you have heard of this ASCII. So what it is, is that um, you have the letters A, B, C, D, and you want to th th transform them. It, it Very often, you see, the coding will be here about letters. So we have the letters of the alphabet, and we want to represent them uh, by numbers, so that we, or by... If, if, Ideally by binary, right? Because we want to encode them into uh, our our computer, and that's binary is the, if you want, the the mother tongue of a computer. Now, um, in in ASCII, what we do is we have the the we, we could give the, the values one, two, three. We could just look at this this position. Uh, of each of these letters, so we would have Z would be 26, and then the, a couple of other things. I must admit I didn't really look up what the next one is, but let's say the next one is space, because uh, we're going to not just put a bunch of letters, but we also want to put sentences, and so we want the space. So th this, this I mean an, a, a space. So space here, okay. Perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, uh, let me read it, look like it like this, sp. Okay, that's the more common way, I think. Then an, um, an underscore is not really a space, so, okay, let me... Okay, I'll do it one more time here. So, space. Okay. And, and, and so on. Um, uh, as I said, I'm not so sure that... I think just space might actually be 32, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, let's think about this. Uh, just these letters and space. Say that's the only thing we don't want to even do the numbers because also in fact I think first the numbers in in real ASCII. So I'm putting this between parentheses. That's not what I'm, I'm doing here. I'm thinking of this scheme where I put the, the the letters and then space. That's the only thing I need to do English. So well, perhaps a period and a comma and so. But let's not bother about that yet. So okay, uh, neither between capital and and, and low case. Okay. So if I do this in binary, let's think about the size of my binary, um, my encoding these numbers. Well, uh, we, since I have to do at least 27, and the next prime, the next power of two, of, of two is 32, that means that the, this will be, okay, of course, this will be, oh, do I... I'm, I'm, the, but the one thing that I'm considering is, should I start already by, from zero here? Because that's what we normally do. Okay, I'm going to do this because it's not necessary, of course. But we normally uh, start always counting from zero. That is, a, in computer science and mathematics, that is the, the way it somehow works out better, right? And we see this happens, that we need this when we do modular arithmetic, in have seen discrete, um, in discrete math one. And so we need... Therefore, from 0 to 26, okay? Uh, and so this would be in binary. So this, is, of course, is decimal that I wrote down. In binary, this would be 0, this would be 1, 2 would be 1, 0, 3 would be 1, 1, 4 would be 1, 0, 0, and so on. Uh, 26, let me think. 26, there's a 16 in there. Uh, and 16 plus 8 is 24, so we need a 2. And then another, uh, no 4. A 2 and no 1, right? 16, 24, 26, yes. So this would be... Uh, so we see at most five bin a string of five binaries. What we... Def now, the problem is that, of course, they are not all five bin uh, five digits, right? This, this one's, these original ones have only two di one digit, two digits, and so on. But one solution is to what we call pat with zeros. So we could write 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 for this, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on, so that they all have length 5. That's one. So this is option 1, if you want. This is option 2. 
Now, each of these options has an advantage and has a, a, a disadvantage. Let's, let's look at the advantage of option one is that it needs less space, right? <laughs> Instead of having always five bits, some letters have less space, okay? But what is the disadvantage? The major disadvantage is, let, let's, let's, and that is, let's say, I want to write the word, um, let's say, uh, ape, the name ape, okay, Abraham, ape, okay, so I would write it 0, 1, and that's, that's the A, the B, and E would be 1, 0, 0. But now comes a little bit of a problem. If I get this string, eh, imagine somebody transmit this to me and I get this string, um, okay, is this now supposed to be ape? That is a possible reading. But another possible reading is to say, okay, this is a, a number that I padded with a zero here. Okay, perhaps in, in, in this option one you don't pad with zero. So you could say, okay, the first zero must be zero. So I could read this as 0 and then 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So this would correspond to A, and what would this then be? Well, I have to calculate, right? 1, 2, 4, so this is 4 plus 8, so this is 12, and 12 would be a 6, 7, I, so, okay, uh, I, J, K, L, M, N, let's see, where am I? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This should be an M. So, this could be read as M. The problem, therefore, is that I do not know exactly how to read such a string. Where to break it down? Which, where is the beginning of one letter and where is, the, where is the end of one letter and the beginning of the new letter? Okay? You see, that is a big disadvantage. I don't have this disadvantage here because if I would write ape, it would be 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then... Um, Zero zero one zero zero, right? Because I would so this would be the padding that I would get by putting five. So this is unambiguously. If I know that this is what I do, unambiguously I can read this as ape. But this only had five strings. This has fifteen, three times as many. So this is a disadvantage of option two. So now we want to combine these two options in somehow. So at the one hand, make sure that every string that you get is can unambiguously translate it back into a word, or, or even with, in which space, and if you allow space, then you can do even sentences, but so that, the, that you keep, keep things a little bit small. Okay, and this is where a binary tree is used. Okay, so let me show you, I'm going to draw an arbitrary binary, binary tree. So here is a binary tree, um, doesn't have to be a full binary tree, so I'm going to make it a little bit not... I'm not going to make it really full, so, okay, let's do this. Uh, what I mean to say, oh, that, that, that was not possible, right? That, was, that looked like more like a ternary tree, so let's not do this guy here, sorry. So I would, I would have these two, and then these two, and the, these two, okay, these two. And perhaps let's make this a single one. It doesn't have to be a, a, a full binary tree, as I said, so I'm going to make it this one, and make this one also like one extra. Okay, so that's not bad. And so now, so I have a binary tree, and what I will do is I put the let the leaves are going to be my characters. I'm here now thinking about letters of the alphabet, but you could do other things, right? Other things could be, you want to encode other things. Like, for instance, if you want to encode a DNA string, you might be, the, or, or, or molecules or something, you, you might put, uh, you want to put atoms there or whatever it is that your field requires to work with. Okay, so I'm going to do letters and say, let's just simply put this A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are the leaves, and so the leaves are the characters. Okay, so you say, so what now? How, how, what is ape now? Okay, I have A, B, and E, right? So I can write ape in this letter. So now, this is a, we, we view this as an ordered binary tree. Now remember what that means. It means that the uh, left child, to the one to the left is considered the left child, the one to the right is considered the right child. And so what we, how we will encode a letter? We will encode a letter through the, because what is the big advantage of trees is that every tree has a unique path from the root to the leaf, so-called branches, right? And, and I can now give names to the 
edges. Namely, if it's a left child, the edge gets a 0. If the, it's a right child, it gets a 1. So here, 0, 1. 0, 1. And it's only 1, then I always consider it to be... Well, I, I guess I... Let me think what... what I don't know whether there is any... I don't think there is in particular convention what you do then, so we can choose a little bit what we do here. So then the same here, that is a 0, a 1, a 0, uh, a 1, and a 0. Okay, left is 0, and if there is only 1, I'm thinking left. But I, I guess here it doesn't matter. You could... No, you have to be a, a little bit systematic, I guess. I think, um, to be truthful... I said it doesn't have to be full binary for what I want to explain, but in general, when we, one uses a coding tree, it is actually full binary, where so it's always the, for sure a left and a right child if there's a child at all. So it's either you have a left and right because you're a parent, or you're a leaf and therefore you carry you are labeled by a character. Yeah. So I remind you, uh, we often we, we we say these are we call these the leaves, but it's really these are leaves. They have a certain and these A and B are labels, and zeros are label, labels. Perhaps also you can call them weights, which we have done in, in, in other cases. So, okay, but let's, let's look at, at A. What's the code of A? Well, it is simply, you write down the path from the root to A. So that would be this path, right? So uh, we, have, we have a path here, so that would be this. Oh, I thought this was, okay, let's, um, let me play a little bit with this thing. I'm in a playing mood, so okay, so I'm gonna do this. So that is this part. Okay. So what is the code for that is well zero 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 zero. Four zeros. You say, Oh, that is gonna be very confusing, Professor, because if if is another thing with two zeros, how are you gonna tell them apart? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's do the other guy. Um I'll do this in different colors. So again, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, it's a bit too big. So B, that would be this way, and then this way, and then this way. So what's the code for B? Is zero, zero, 001. Okay, you say, oh, see, professor, all, all zeros, how can you gonna keep them apart? Okay, 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 okay. And then finally, uh, do this guy. Uh, let's make it smaller, blue, okay. So uh, what do we go? E we want, right? Yeah, so... Mm. Doom, doom. Oh, uh, I really have to do this in pieces, otherwise he wants to be smart. E, that is uh, 1, 1, 0. It's always stop from the top to the bottom that we list the edges. I hope it's clear what, where this comes from, right? Edge 1, edge 1, edge 0. Or, if you want, right, right, left. And this is left, 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 left. You, think, you can do this as uh, street directions you're giving. Okay, so ape, what would ape then be? Ape would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. You say, oh, this could be so many different things. You can break that down this way and this way. Okay, all right, okay, let's see. Suppose this is what I get, right? Let's see what, 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 can I figure out what the original message was? Uh, forget that, we, that this comes from ape. Okay, what do you do? So uh, let me get rid of all my beautiful colors, because otherwise I cannot, okay, uh, this is gonna, not gonna work, uh, see, I lost one, okay, so I have to draw a couple of these guys, right, so I had this guy, had this guy, and had this guy, okay, so let's figure out what this means, what do you do, we, it's directions, so zero means go left, so I'll, I'll do this here, so the first zero means, uh, this is too big, let me, let me make this smaller as well. So this zero, this zero, begin means here. The next zero means go left. Then there's another zero, still go left. There's another zero, go left. There's another zero, go left. Hey, there is no left. Ah, that means you have reached a leaf, and therefore that's the letter. You see how it? I end up in A and not in B or anything else. There are other things that have. We start with zero, zero. But I don't get them because I start, um, I stop when I find a leaf and then I read off what the letter is. And now I repeat, okay? Rinse and repeat, as they say. Okay, so we start with root. Uh, what do we have to do? A, a zero, okay? And then another zero, okay? 
okay, and then a one, okay, and then another one. There's no other one. Ah, that means you are in a leaf, you're done. So this is B. Okay, and then finally, uh, oh, you can see, of course, one, one, oh, uh, this, this, this guy has fallen off the roof. Okay, and then here, and that gives me E. And that's the principle of uh, binary trees. They have this uh, property that if you use the leaves, every leaves, and you put several leaves in order, yeah, you might say, oh, this is because this was alphabetical. No, 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 no. Let's do something else. Okay, um, here is something. I'm going to write something. Uh, um, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, uh, zero, one. Uh, zero, 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 zero. Oh, that might be one too many zeros. Okay. Let's see what this would be. Is it, is it something? I mean, of course, if I take an arbitrary string, it might not be anything. But let's see whether this is. Okay. Let's follow the directions again. So uh, I'll do this now in red, I guess. Because otherwise we cannot follow anymore. Okay, so uh, one. Okay, one means go right. The next one is zero, go left. The next one is zero, go left. And you're in a root, so you're done. So this is D. And you start, see, once you have a left, uh, um, reach the leaf, and therefore have a, a, a character that, that uh, is associated with it, a label, you start again from the ro uh, root with, with, again, whatever it is, one, okay, zero, zero. That means, of course, the same thing, right? I end up again in D, okay? Right? I didn't say it would make sense, right? I'm just saying it's unambiguous. Zero, 01, okay? Zero, 01, I'm going to have to get a little bit rid of, of colors. It's not going to work. I'm going to use... Okay, that worked. That worked. Yep. Okay. Wow, I got lucky so far. Yep. Yep. I, these two are too close. Okay, this one and this one, right? Okay. So what is zero, 01? Okay. Zero, 01. I'm in a leaf, it stops, so this is C. And then zero, zero, 0000, we have seen zero, zero, 0000, that is zero, 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 0000, that is, uh, oh, that was not a part. Uh, sorry. I want to do it so that you see it. If you later on want to look at it again. So this was A. So you see, oh, this was C, right? I didn't write it down. So we, you, you see that if you get an, a valid code, then it translates into one way only. And that is why it's a coding tree, and that's why we use these binary trees. OK. Now, what's the disadvantage here so far? Well, if I do this random, then I see, for instance, the letter A, I need four characters for, right? But the letter C, I only need two. That, that, so that's one of the, the beauties, beauties of these three, right? Some leaves, what, what is the length of, of, of a code for a letter? It's the level, of the, the level of the letter, right? The length of the path from the root to the uh, leaf, the, the length of the branch. Uh, so these two have, uh, D has length 3, C has length 2, and this has length 4. Now, that's a bit silly because most <coughs> English words contain more A's than it will contain C's. So I want to actually reduce the uh, amount. If I'm trying to gonna do the whole, the whole, a whole page of a, of a book in, in this uh, coding, then um, I better use words, letters like E and A that are very frequently used, give them very small... Um, as small as possible lengths, okay? So, we have a principle. Now we want to, how do we make this optimal? How do we make that, the principle is we use a binary tree and the leaves will be the characters, but how do we do this so that we, um, we, we minimize the predicted, um, of course, it's all predicted because you don't know. If, 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 the co if, if you have to encode something and somewhere uh, th this was a uh, choo-choo train, the word choo-choo train, okay, there are two C's in there, so that was not perhaps a bad thing to do. But if if you had to do something with, with, with uh, you know, also E, for instance, is, is a bit too long here. So how do we do this, okay? And that is the, this is what is called Hoffman coding. Hoffman is again a name of a person, so uh, 
Hoff, David Hoffman, and he came up with this thing. I think he did this when he was an uh, even undergrad. Uh, let me see. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, he was a graduate student, but he did it as a graduate student. It was a paper. It was basically one, an essay that he had to write, like one of these assignments that they gave you. By the way, don't forget your assignments, right? Uh, pick somebody, but don't pick all oh, Hoffman now, right? Go look a little bit. Pick somebody that attracts you, that appeals to you. And, and if that's not there, you wait perhaps a little bit, right? If there might be some other people. You can look at in advance and say, oh, I see this guy is going to come, and I know, have heard of this guy, and I want to do something about it, okay? But you have to pick somebody that is relevant, is part of the, the, the material that we covered in Discrete Math 2, somehow. It's somehow linked to it. That's one thing that you have to say. And another thing is important also is you have to justify why you picked them, not just, oh, I opened the book and that's what I got. No, no, there has to be some, something personal, something that you say, oh, that stood out to me, or that appealed to me, whatever that might, whatever that might be. Okay? Which means that you probably have to look at a couple of these biographies before you can decide what you do. All right. So, the, what, so here, what, what, how does it work? So when, when, one, when one want to make um, uh, a Hoffman coding, a Hoffman coding it's called. And so we, we have to give... Make a binary tree, actually a full binary tree, and which we're gonna the leaves will be the letters, but we want to do it so that letters that are used more frequently are have less smaller have smaller parts. You understand? Okay. Now, it of course it this depends on the language that we use. English E is used a lot. Perhaps in another language, it's Spanish. Perhaps A's are used more often. So one, we, we, what we what we want is a so-called frequency. How often does a letter occur in a particular uh, language, or perhaps in a particular text? Because it sometimes might be something else that you're translating, not necessarily uh, English. It could be some code words, or it could be even hexadecimal numbers, or something. I don't want to. So we, this is just theoretical, right? The, the actual practical applications that we, well, you could imagine, I have to imagine. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to take the one from the textbook. And um, these are the frequencies of some... Okay, so I, let me start with... The, I'll do it a little bit differently within the textbook. So these are the, our characters that we want to talk about, and this is their uh, frequency. And the frequency is, is a... Is a is a percentage or out of 100. So we have the letters A, B, C, D, and F, I think. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, and F. So in a, certain, in a certain text or texts or messages that, that will use these four char six characters, the following frequencies are observed that this has 0.8%. 8% of the letters will be of this form. Uh, 10%, when percent means uh, on 100, right? 10% 10 is 10 hundredths, is 0 0.10. I'm going to always write two decimals, even if it's 0 0.1. Uh, you'll see why. Uh, this 0 0.12, this is 0 0.015. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to change a little bit from the textbook because I don't know why they did this. So I'm going to put this and this here. I, I, let me change another, make another change as well here. I, I really don't know why. Um, so that means that I cannot rely on my on, on what I do here anymore. But okay. So okay, so I intermit in D in the textbook. I'm just writing this here for me that at the end I see that I double check that I did make. It better. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, if this is the full alphabet that we will use, these six letters only, this has to add up to uh, one, does it? Uh, 75 and 95, uh, what I would say, uh, 55, 75, 85, 90, 100. Yeah, so this adds up to one, 1.0. Okay, 
I don't say that it has to be, but it's kind of silly not to. Why would you otherwise uh, what you ought to do? No. So step one, and the, well, again, it's a repetitive, we, it's a recursive, uh, inductive steps. We do, we do many steps the same thing. And the so step one will be is um, order the trees. And I have to say now something here about, okay, we st we'll start with a forest. And the goal is to make a tree. So let me, re re let me before I do this, what is the technique that I'm going to use? What, what it's like a little, little technique I'm using. So I'm going to rid myself here of some... Well, I'll do it here. I can do it below here. And then if I need more space, I'll... So imagine, what is a forest? That's, we haven't really used that, but this is the a case where we have a forest. A forest consists of... A bunch of trees and I'm for since we're only going to do with binary trees although I'm not going to make it full binary trees here well let's make it a full binary tree no I, I, I sorry I, I don't want to make it for just for binary trees I want to do this for arbitrary trees so this is one tree say and here would be another tree I'm going to make this a little bit silly tree but okay like this and then a third tree say I do this one uh, let's give this two and I give this three parents, uh, three children, or give them perhaps, no, okay, and then this one, something like that. So this is a forest, a forest is a, com is a collection, a finer collection, of course, of trees. And now, when we have trees, we're going to make out of any two, when we take two trees, let's just take these two trees, we're going to make a single tree out of that. And how do we do this? The procedure uh, is, okay, I guess what I was trying to say... Okay, what I was saying is correct still, but let me do it only for binary trees. That's the only place that we're going the only thing that we're going to use, so I'm going to do it only for binary trees. Otherwise, it might be get a little bit too confusing. All right, so how do we make, combine into, we're going to combine this into a single tree. You can think about it, how would you, how would you do, go about this? But the obvious thing is, and I'm, Gonna, I'm giving myself a little bit space on the top because what? I'm going to put, I introduce a new root. So this is a new root. And what do I do? Well, I combine the two, and here we are. As simple as that. And it does, as I said, it doesn't have to be binary. I could, I could as well have uh, adjoined this guy here. But there is now one thing that is going to be very important for us. Is okay. This I did is a tree, and it doesn't matter in which order I do, if I don't bother about this to be an ordered tree. But these binary trees, that coding trees, are ordered trees, because why? Because left was a zero and right was a one. We need to make sure that the lefts are zeros and rights are ones. Correct? Yeah. So, if I do this, the order in which I do this is, is going to be important. If I don't care about ordering, then the ordering doesn't, then doesn't matter. Whether I put this guy on the left, and if I put this guy on the left, this guy on the right, doesn't make a difference, or the other way around, if I'm not caring about left and right. But if I care about left and right, I have to decide which goes left, which goes right. That's the only thing I have to think about. When I combine two trees into two binary trees, into a new binary tree. By the way, these were not full binary trees, but... If you now think about it, suppose they were full. So how can I make this full by the... Was this a full by the tree? Oh, this is the only part where it doesn't make it full, right? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, 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 right? This is the only part where it's not full. Oh, okay, that was... That was uh, the two that I took were already full. And you see, the new combined tree is again full. Because I'm taking always two trees and make those roots children of a new parent. It basically, as this is what happens, right? If you are uh, going through a genealogical tree, and you, you suppose your branch of the family has gone, has gotten this far, and you found an ancestor called Bartholomeus Brown, and another guy found an ancestor called uh, I don't know, uh, Jediba uh, Brown, 
and then it turns out, and you're on the, on the chat board, on, on, on Ancestry, and you talk to each other, and Browns are talking to each other, and they say, okay, these guys seem to be from the same period, they are the same age almost, one is two years younger than the other, and then thinking long and, and hard about it, and seeing the circumstances, well, they must be brothers. Oh, they have a parent then. And so, this once you have found a parent, well, you start putting it there, and perhaps you're lucky, you find out who the name, the name of the parent is. But that's how you start building a genealogical tree, right? Okay, so keep this now in mind, that is what we're going to do. So, we have to start from the forest. What forest? Oh, okay, this is, so, order the trees in the forest. So that was the first step. So I haven't had a forest yet. Well, at the moment, my forest will be roots, just different roots, right? Right. So these, these are the trees, right? But this is also a tree. It's the stupidest of all trees, but it is a tree. It's just a root. And I could take that into combination, right? I could look if I take this tree on the, this tree together with this like silly tree, but I combine them and it's no longer really silly anymore. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. At the beginning, so as perhaps a stop, should, as, as a step, that this is the step that we're going to do, and this is the step that we're going to keep doing, so I'll, I'll move this a little bit down here, but step zero, perhaps, is the only step that we're going to do once. Make a forest of roots. So what I mean is, each of these three letters gets a root, becomes a root. So each, each, each is, uh, involves a tree. So here are the uh, uh, one, two, three, six, right? Okay. So uh, let's let's label them. So this is A, B, C, D, E, and F. This is by forest. It's basically they are plant. We just planted them, right? The little seeds. They're sitting ready to to burst up. We don't see much. So now we're going to make trees out of that. But the first step is order the trees in the forest. In which way? Well, of course, we have this ordering by frequency. And so what we're going to do here is, um, it's perhaps a little bit counterintuitive, but um, let me double check here that I do this the way the book does this. I always find it counterintuitive, so I always have to think a little bit of it. I would do it the other way, but I want to st stick to what the book does. Um, uh, Ah, yeah, so it is, it is confusing. Okay, it is confusing. Okay. We order from small from small to big. I mean, of course, uh, meaning in, in, in our English, we always go from left to right, right? If, if, it is, if you're used to um, one of the other scripts, like Arabic or something like that, then you might order it differently. But let's, we stick from small to big. So this ordering is not exactly correct, because the smallest one would have been D, so let's write this again. So this is D. Okay, the, the, the sixth one, but now I'm going to write them in the right order. You might say, couldn't I have done it in the beginning? Yeah, I could, of course. So this would be D. And I'm going to also keep track of what actually the order is. So this, uh, the, the, the frequency is, oh, that's too big. Okay, I'm going to make this much smaller. Okay. So this is 0 0.8. Then the next one uh, is B. Okay, the next biggest one, so we have D and is C. Uh, then comes A, then comes F, and then comes E. So what the change that I made, by the way, from the textbook is in the textbook they had A the smallest, B the second smallest. That was... I find that misleading, because then you think, oh, this is, I also put it alphabetically. No, no, you put it in order of frequency. So this is 0 0.12, this is uh, 0 0.15, this is 0 0.20, and, for, and E is 0 0.35. So, okay. Uh, and again, this is a, a, a random mean. This is an example, right? This, I don't know in which alphabet the Fs would be. Uh, would, there would be a lot of F words in this alphabet if this frequency is 20. So, okay, this might be... Okay. So, that's step one. We order the trees, and then we... Um, okay. I 
as I said, this, I want to make sure that I do it exactly the way that this, you have to do it always the same way. And as long as you do it the same way, I don't think it matters. But it's, um, we take the two trees of least weight. Trees, Professor, there are no trees. Well, yes, there are trees, and, and because they will become trees. So we take the two lowest one, which is because we have ordered them, it's easy to see, right? So uh, I'm talking about, therefore, these two. And I'm combining them into one tree. Ah, we know, we, we know how to do that, Professor. We put an extra node. Okay, we put the extra node here. That will be the root. And so this will be D and this will be B. Huh. The problem is, oh, not a problem, the, I, we must put the one with highest frequency on the left. So uh, this is the way the Hoffman code works. And this guarantees that eventually the shortest, the one with the highest frequency should have the shortest path. So the shortest uh, branch, right? So that should be E. So that is the guarantee, that guarantees this. By doing, so I'll, I'll write this up. So, um, so we, so step one. So step two is, oh, sorry. That's not, I'll write it down because otherwise, Step two is combine the two trees of, of least weight, of least frequency, least weight. Let's call it weight. So I'm, um, well, at least frequency. Let me call it frequency. The book calls it weight, but we have been calling it frequency. So that's step two. That is what we're going to do here. But then put highest left. So the highest would be here B, and therefore has to be put on the left. Let me see here. Uh, the highest should be uh, uh, right. Uh, it should be D, and therefore, sorry, D, D. Uh, the highest should be B. Yes, right, right. I said it right. So, let's do, finally do what we did. So we make a new tree, this is still D, and this is still B. We don't give a name to the root anymore, but we calculate its frequency. It's the sum. So root, the frequency, is the sum of the frequencies. Okay? So what does that mean in this particular case? Uh, we're using, what are we using? Uh, this guy. Uh, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.10, that is 0 0.18. So, I repeat, I take the sum of these two, that becomes a new frequency. If you want to think about this, what we do is kind of, okay, here we have each letter separately, and now we're going to kind of put them in little pockets together. Like, and then we open, like, in, you, you put them in a pocket, in, in a bag, and then you put that bag in another bag, and so on. And as you open bags, each bag has a certain weight or frequency. So, this guy will, each of se separate one has this weight, but if you put them together, this becomes the weight. So perhaps weight is a bit more uh, telling in this case, what happens. Okay. And then, that's it. Then we go back to step one. Order trees in the forest. So notice that, what do we have now? Okay. We have, these guys are gone, so perhaps I should put them uh, uh, out of their misery. So I'll do this this way. So these are now gone. Right? So we don't have these anymore. We have now these guys. Now, they are not in order yet. So, um, this order trees in forest, I don't think it's really necessary. It helps visually see what happens, but we don't need to do this. It is enough, therefore, so this step is perhaps useful if you want to work this out, but it requires a lot of redrawing. Okay, so I'm going to do it one more time, but then next time I'm not going to do it anymore. Let's see what we have. Uh, first of all, let's get rid of these guys, right? So, we don't... Hello. Okay. Um, <coughs> what was that thing? Ah, yeah. So, let's order them. The smallest... What is now the smallest tree? C, right? So, we will have... This will be C... Then the next one will be A. The next one will be the new tree that we have. Then we get F, and then we get E. Notice there are only five now because we have combined two. Okay, so let's let's 
uh, make it clear that we have everything. So I said this was C, and then the next one was A, and then the next one was this, this tree that we just made. So this was the DB tree, if you want. And then the uh, next one was F, and then finally E. And again, just to see, we put the uh, weights there. Again, this is, this is not necessary. You don't have to write it that way, but it helps you putting everything together, right? That you don't have to start looking up numbers all the time. Uh, no, that's not right. This is 20. This is 0 0.20, and this was 0 0.35. Okay. And now repeat, step two. Combine the two trees, that's these two trees. But now, and, and that's why I don't think the first, that ordering is so right, because it's always the, the, the second one, right? These are the two lowest ones, but this will go right and this will go left. So I, I don't know why they insist that you do this. So I, uh, from now on, I'm just going to do this step, and we're not going to do step one anymore. I'm just going to combine the two, the two trees of last weight, least weight. So uh, let's do this here. So uh, let me say this is a new, st a new calculation, right? So I'm going to combine uh, C and A, but A has to go to the, on the left, right? Put highest left. So le let me make it much more uh, shorter. I say highest is left, okay? So this will be... We have a new root, unnamed, and then the two roots, this will be A and this will be C. This is the effect of putting these two guys together. All right, let's do that. So we have this and that. And then these two guys are gone, so I'm going to get rid of them. And what is the new weight? Well, the sum of the two, that is 0 0.27. Good. Let's combine the two trees of least weight without ordering them. What are the two trees of least weight? Let's uh, circle them. Uh, these are these two guys, right? So these two guys are now going to combine, all right? And what goes left, what goes right? The highest one, that will be... So here's the new root. Let's make a new root before we do anything. Now, the highest one is F, and the lowest one is this guy, which is itself already a, a little tree. It has grown a little, a little bit. So here is D, and here is B, right? Notice the new roots never get names, right? Because they are in, they're going to be, eventually what we end up with, you can see that we are building a binary tree eventually, right? A full binary tree, in fact. Eventually, we will end up with one binary tree, and the leaves will be the characters, and that's what we said is what the coding is. Great. Uh, what am I doing? I'm talking too much, and then, then I forget things. What I have to do? Add up the uh, frequencies. So, this is, combine the two frequencies. We put them in one to one. These two guys, we put in one more back. Remember, this is, sits already in the back, right? You put them together, what's the weight of the back? 0 0.38. 0 0.38. Okay, so this one is gone out too. So let's, let's make sure that these, we don't look at these anymore. But don't forget, E is still there, right? Now we have to combine the two lowest. What are these? The two lowest are this guy and this guy. And All right, so I'm going to do this in the next level here. So this is going to be the new root of this combination. Now the highest one is E, so he's going to go on the left. So E, you come here, and whatever I have there, you come here. Okay? So this will be A, and this will be C. So here we go. Dup, dup, dup. What do you have to do? Well, uh, add the two weights. Uh, there are 50, 62. 0 0.62. Now, at any time, you could have to check that the, the sum should always add up to 1, right? Because we're just taking, combining two of these weights. So, now we have to combine these two, and the only thing that we need to do is make sure that the highest one comes on the right and the lowest one comes on the left. I'm going to make myself, since I, I can do a lot of erasing so, I'm going to say, okay, my highest one is here, so this is going to be the new root of the final tree, and then the other guy, and look how, how nice I can do here, I can, oh, no, no, that's not what I want to do, I'll move it here, there we go, that line somehow came with me, but that, I'm going to get rid of that line, all right, and this is now my new tree, I don't need to really no, know anymore what these weights are here, well, yeah, well, right, uh, what is the sum now? If, if I combined everything, it was, sorry, I, I should have, let me not erase this yet. If I combine both, you see it has to be one, right? And that is one. And so here is our tree. 
So now, with that tree, let's now convey, uh, let's make ape again. Ape is very popular here, so let's write ape again in using this encoding. Okay, so A. So where is A? Okay, now if you use the tree to code, you you, well, okay, let's let's put the label perhaps. Let's okay, let's let's now get rid of the weights because the weights do not play anymore. We have made this is the half this is the end of the algorithm, right? We have our uh, our guy. Uh, except that I erased everything, but that's just because I was trying to get rid of some stuff. Okay. So left is zero and right is one. Simple, right? See, you, what, what I like about these graphs is there are clever things, and you have to really think about it, and you do it, and then a lot of it is just like something you can give to your little, I don't know, some of you might have a little boy of five years old or little nephew, and you can say, okay, guy, come and, and put zeros on the left and right and, and, and ones at the right. So some things are very easy, and some things you have to think about. And now you can even let him say, okay, what is A? Well, A is, this is A. How do we go to A? Zero, one, zero. So, 0, 1, 0. And do we have to put a comma or a bar? No, 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 it doesn't matter. That's the whole point. We can put whatever we want next to the next one without... Uh, it is... Um, there is only one way to inter interpret this. This is unambiguous. So, what is B? B was uh, go right, go right, go right. 1, 1, 1. And finally, E, go left, go left. 0, 0. And notice, by the way, so this is ape, and as I said, it can only be ape. It cannot be anything else. The instructions, you follow the instructions until you get the leaf, you record the leaf, and you start again. That's that you keep collecting letters by going on, uh, following the directions. That this this you could think this is basically just a set of directions. And you begin, notice the beauty of this thing is also before you trans before you decode it. Remember. I don't know this from cryptography, you still remember. Encoding means you write a, a known text in some in code, in a, in a new um, language, in a new alphabet, binary in this case. And decoding is the opposite, right? You have this binary uh, string, and that rep represents a real world, and that is the decoding. So what I'm trying to, what I was saying here is that if you get such a, a code, then you don't know in, ex in, in advance how many letters are actually involved. You have to decode it before you see that it's actually, oh, there's actually three letters. This could be the code for a single letter. You never know. If this Z, for instance, would have probably very low uh, frequency and therefore would, would, would have perhaps a string of seven, seven characters, seven binary numbers before we... Okay. So... And, and oh yeah, so what I now want to also show is uh, I, I'm not going to work out the details of why is this working, why is it doing exactly what we wanted to do, but just want you to show what is the least frequent letter was B, what is the length of B? Well, one, two, three. That was the longest path. Now it's not the only one. Also D and A and C have that part, but if you look at it. A, B, C, and D. They are kind of in the same order of magnitude. The E and F were much. Uh, more frequent, right? And the most frequent has only two. And no, that's not true. This has two, and this also has two. So the two f most frequent ones, E, zero, zero, and F, one, zero, are the most, um, have the shortest paths. Uh, they require the least number of dig digits to encode, and this is how you save space. Now, okay. This seems a trivial matter for these few letters that we do, but imagine you do this for perhaps an alphabet. And even what is much more interesting is we, we could do this not just for uh, letter by letter, but for instance, syllable by syllable, or perhaps every two letters by two letters. Okay? And uh, you say, oh, that, that is smart, right? So you could do something if you do this. Uh, um, I'm not going to make the whole word as the author is going to do, so say, okay, you do these groups here, okay? That's a new code that you do. So you take a letter and a vowel, perhaps. You encode it that way. Okay, clever, right? Now, 
This is not that clever because already in, in uh, 600 years ago, a code like that existed that was called cuneiform, and uh, the old Persians used this, wrote their, their words in, in letter with a with letter, consonant with vowel, consonant with vowel. And so you group this together, and then you get, for each of these groups, you have a symbol, uh, or the, in our case, a binary code, and you want the, the combinations that occur the most to have the least length, and therefore you can read, write text much shorter. And if you do this this way, you can really drastically uh, uh, reduce the amount of um, um, space you need, because a lot of combinations, like a combination like uh, CL, Okay, that can still happen, but uh, let's say TC. I have to really think, think hard about a word that would have a combination TC in there. So a lot of combinations are almost never going to occur, where other combinations like BE or RA or RE, they're probably going to often, often, often occur more. I so we can't do that. I'm going to let you do homeworks on that. I will do a quiz on this because I like this thing and it's a nice thing to figure out. Um, this is coding trees, and the next lecture will be on even more exciting gaming trees. We're going to build a tree to solve, to, that tells us what's the best strategy to, make, to win a game, or perhaps even to win the most money with a game. Okay, so this movie finished, go run to the next one, which just a click away by the way.